Before starting today's video lecture, I hope you have gone through the previous three video lectures. And now you all are familiar to the following concepts. Till now we have studied that in response to an antigen our immune system produces heterogeneous mixture of antibodies. These antibodies are of different specificities that is, these antibodies recognize different opitopes on the same antigen. The antibodies derived from the multiple clone of cells are known as polyclonal antibodies. We also understood that polyclonal antibodies have some limitations in diagnostic and therapeutic applications. Today we will study monoclonal antibodies. As the name reflects, monoclonal antibodies are derived from the clones of single activated B cell. So, these antibodies will recognize and bind only one particular epitope on an antigen. We can also say that monoclonal antibodies are identical antibodies with same specificity. The technique of production of monoclonal antibodies was discovered by Georges J. F. Kohler and Cesar Milstein in 1975. This technique is known as hybridoma technology. They were jointly awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1984. Let's study in detail the technique of monoclonal antibody production. First step in production of monoclonal antibodies is the immunization of an animal. Usually the animal used is the mouse. Mouse is immunized with the antigen against which we need antibodies. Let's say this is our antigen, and it has four different epitopes. Mouse is injected with the antigen several times. As a result, mouse B lymphocytes are stimulated against the epitopes or antigenic determinants of the injected antigen. After several weeks, when these B lymphocytes reach to an optimal amount, the mouse is sacrificed. Spleen of mouse is removed aseptically. It is known to us that spleen is the secondary lymphoid organ, and we can easily harvest activated B lymphocytes from spleen. Spleen is then subjected to mechanical or enzymatic disruption. This results in the release of cells. Activated B cells or plasma cells are separated from the normal spleen B cells by density gradient centrifugation. So, at the end of this step, we have activated B cells which are capable of producing antibodies against the specific epitopes present on the antigen. Next step is cell fusion. B lymphocytes have a short lifespan in cell culture. In this step, activated B lymphocytes are fused with myeloma cells. Here we need to note that these myeloma cells being used are mutated myeloma cells. Myeloma cells are cancerous B cells, they can divide indefinitely in a culture. But their two genes are mutated first is HGPRT gene. Thus, they are not able to synthesize nucleotides by the salvage pathway. And second gene is the immunoglobulin genes. As a result of mutation in these genes, these myeloma cells cannot produce their own antibodies. These mutations are represented as HGPRT negative and Ig negative. Cell fusion is done by mixing two type of cells in the presence of chemical fusogen, polyethylene glycol. As a result of cell fusion, we will have five type of cells. Unfused B cells and fused B cells. Unfused myeloma cells and fused myeloma cells. And hybrid cells formed by fusion of an activated B cell and a myeloma cell. These hybrid cells are also known as hybridomas. In our illustration, we have four types of activated B cells, each specific to one of the four epitopes on the antigen. So, hybrid cells will also be of four types. Now, our next aim is to select these hybridomas from this mixture of cells. 
Selection of hybridomas from the mixture of fused and unfused cells is done by using HAT medium. HAT stands for hyposanthine, aminopterin, and thymidine. Recall that HAT medium is a selection medium from mammalian cell cultures. Selection of cells in this medium is based on the fact that there are two pathways of nucleotide synthesis in mammals. Aminoptrain present in the HAT medium blocks the de novo pathway. The only way a cell can survive in HAT medium is by using the salvage pathway of nucleotide synthesis. HGPRT is a key enzyme in the salvage pathway. So, if cell has a non-functional HGPRT gene, the cell will die in the HAT medium. This is because for this cell, both pathways of nucleotide synthesis will fail in HAT medium. In this step, the mixture of cells obtained after fusion step is transferred to the HAT medium. Fused and unfused B cells die within few days because of their short lifespan. They are not able to divide indefinitely in cell culture. Fused and unfused myeloma cells also die. This is because myeloma cells are HGPRT negative, and aminopterin present in the HAT medium blocks the de novo pathway. Hybrid cells or hybridomas survive in HAT medium. These hybrid cells are able to synthesize nucleotide by the salvage pathway. The functional HGPRT enzyme is contributed by the activated B cell partner. Also these cells are able to divide indefinitely, and this property is contributed by the myeloma cell partner. Therefore, what remains in HAT medium are the desired hybrid cells producing antibodies against the specific epilepsy on an antigen. Now these hybrid cells are again a mixture of B cells, producing antibodies of different specificities. Recall that. Each of these B cells will produce antibodies specific to different epilepsy on the same antigen. Our aim is to select and propagate single antibody producing hybrid cell. We need to isolate these hybridomas and grow them individually. Therefore, next step is the isolation of hybridomas of single specificity. This is done by a method known as limiting dilution. In this method, the cells or hybridomas are distributed in multi-well culture plates at very low density. This is done such that, on an average each well contain a single cell. In the next step, these hybridomas are screened for the secretion of the antibody of desired specificity. This screening is done mostly by two techniques namely ELISA and RIA. Once the hybridoma cells producing the desired antibody are identified, they are isolated and cloned in the next step. So, now we have separate clones of activated B cells each producing antibodies of a single specificity. In each case, the antibodies produced are known as monoclonal antibodies. In the final step, these hybridomas and monoclonal antibodies are characterized and stored. Mostly they are stored in liquid nitrogen. Now these monoclonal antibodies are ready to use in treating and diagnosing diseases.